Hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Uh, please give me a thumbs up or a high five or a smiley in the chat if you can hear me loud and clearly. Jesus. All right. Thank you, Reese. Thank you, Toko Zani. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Marcus. And Andrini. Andrini. I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And Miss Naidu. Thank you very much. Okay, I see the I see the numbers are also beginning to pick up a little. All right, all right, all right, all right. So just 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 out of interest sake, thank you, Ayanda. Thank you, Komuto. Um, just out of interest sake, if you'll just drop for me in the chat as well. On average, how many how many are you guys in a class? Because I, I know this is made up of two groups. So I'm just curious on average, how many are you guys um, in the sessions that you've obviously had during the course of the week? I'm sure it's just been one or two other lessons that you've had this week. Um, could you just drop for me in the, cha in the chat um, how many you typically are? I don't need an exact figure. I just uh, am curious roughly how many you guys are. In terms of class number, anybody want to take a guess? Anybody want to take a guess? 16 or so. Thank you, Tokosani. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Right. So um, I don't know if you guys have had any documentation, any documentation uh, confirming this. Um, but I am Aubrey Sanzani, that's my name. Okay, I think I'm going to write it for you on this whiteboard right here. Okay. This is my first name. And this is my second name. Right. Cool. And you guys may refer to me as Sir, you may refer to me as Aubrey, you may refer to me as Mr. Sanzani. Either or, I'm all good. I'm all good. Uh, no stress at all. Um, before we do anything, <clears throat> today today is literally uh, a relaxed session. It's not going to be anything too hectic. We will get into Unit 1. Um, we will get into Unit 1, uh, but yeah. I know that some people might still be registering and so forth, so forth. So only tomorrow will we really get into Unit 1. Um, but today, you know, I just want to obviously touch base with you guys. And um, and then tomorrow we'll really get it going. But that said, we will actually still be learning something today. Um, so, yeah, that's my name. And then, yeah, let me actually share my screen with you. Um, yeah, let me share my screen with you. And then there's something that I want to quickly quickly show you, which is of great significance. I think when you guys begin a module, this is the first thing that you should actually be asking yourselves. So let me quickly share my entire screen with you. Okay, and let's see, did I do I still have that open? Okay, so now you should be able to see my screen. Okay should be able to see what I see. Right. Um, where's that document? Yes. Okay. So every semester, whenever you get into a module, you need to get your um, module, module outlay. And you need to ask yourself, what are the weightings? How, how am I going to get my final mark, okay, right? Uh, and for you guys, this is typically how you are going to. I know some of you, this module might actually be um, as follows. Um, 
slash six two two one right or something to that effect yours might be slightly different yeah i think it's six yeah that's correct so it could be either one of these module codes it's don't worry it is the correct module okay right so um the reason why i i share this with you is because guys I, if you know this from the beginning it's a whole lot more easier in terms of your approach because you know what's important what's not important um, and how to obviously navigate your way um, to achieving the best possible mark okay so first things first you've got ice tasks which stand for integrated curriculum engagement okay right uh, chances are you'll have four minimum of those and this is typically for any module okay and that would count towards 10% of your final mark guys these are exercises that I'll set up for you on VC learn which I'm going to take you where I will always put them right um, please make sure that you, you you do these things and score as high as possible okay so that you can obviously get this 10% this 10% in my opinion is a giveaway so why not just make sure that you get all of it um, save you the hassle of uh, struggling to achieve your best possible mark okay or you know uh, you know trying to do resubmissions and all those other things we don't need to do because I know I only have diligent and focused students on this call as we speak or this collab session right then test one what is the waiting for test one that's 25 percent of your final mark okay here you can see it's one hour long 60 minutes okay it's closed book okay obviously this is assuming a typical scenario right um, with COVID um, they haven't yet confirmed to us but um, we can never be too sure whether it will be a take home or it will be uh, a write down uh, test I think for the numbers module which this would fall under that it will be a sit down okay but we will know closer to the time so don't uh, take my word for it cool then test two 30 percent okay in other words test two right is more important than test one okay and also what you can see here with in relation to test one is what it covers learning unit one and unit two okay and then test two learning unit three to learning unit four guys now bear in mind when they say learning unit three and four it doesn't mean that they won't test you on unit one and two in fact chances are they will in terms of theoretical questions okay so you still need to prepare learning unit one and two okay but obviously the emphasis is on learning unit three and four okay so just bear that in mind and then finally your exam which is 180 marks okay close book all right and here we are testing you on all seven units right so that's right you have seven units and that counts for 35 percent so again your exam is more important than test one and test two okay but if you want to make your life easy smash test one why because it's only unit one and unit two unit one is theory all right and then unit two yes there's some calculations but obviously due to it being you know the early chapters it's easier than that of test two okay where they're introducing a whole lot more stuff inside okay um so guys be smart about it don't 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 now say i wish i had done well in test two when you are now uh, at a place where things haven't gone so well in test one and things haven't gone so well in test two and now you desperately need to do well in your exam or you desperately um, um, need to do in t do well in test two because you just didn't prepare for test one okay right you've been warned um, take take the time to actually um, do 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 your best in test one all right uh, just to put yourself in a nice position over there okay so now that that has been addressed okay I want to take you guys to where you would actually then find your ice ice exercises okay so here I am you guys should be able to see uh, something similar when you click on your blackboard collaborate but that's not what we're interested in right now 
what we're interested in is more resources okay now some of you are familiar with this because obviously you're coming back from you're coming back from last year you may have been doing a high certificate with us or another program all together with us okay so you know this is nothing new to you but uh, for the rest of you um, yeah actually you guys are second year sorry you guys are second year so this should not be anything new to you okay so under more resources is pretty much where I would store everything that would be of relevance to you that I would need to share with you okay but now speaking to ice tasks ice task every ice task I do with you is going to be electronic okay um, and therefore you will find it in ice activities under more resources there you can see um, you guys on your side you won't be able to see this um, because as you can see here item is hidden from students okay but I've already uploaded your ice tasks for the semester here you can see question 3.1 question 3.2, question 3.5, all right, and so forth and so forth. So that's how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 ice tasks that, I give, uh, that I'm going to give you guys over the course of the semester, right? 9 ice tasks. So if I get to the end of the semester and you don't have ice tasks for me, right, or you say, sir, I submitted, but you know, uh, I can't help you because I will have given you more than the sufficient and at the end of the semester all I need is two. So if you fail, if I fail to have at least two marks from you, that's not my fault. That's the system's fault, okay? And I'm not an IT guy. I am a finance graduate, okay? So please make sure that you don't just do two ice tasks, guys. Make it a point to do as many as you possibly can, if not all. Okay, so that when you get to the end of the semester, you're not saying, sir, but I only have one ice task mark, uh, but I did two. And these things do happen because, hey, technology sometimes, is, but it, my whole point is that, guys, make sure that you do all your ice tasks, please, 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 so that you don't find yourself in that situation. All right, the last thing you want is having done your bit all right, in terms of everything else, and then now it's just ice tasks that have failed you. An easy 10% you could have had for free, okay? So please make sure you do these ice tasks. Okay, now let's go back to more resources. Enough about that. Let's go back to more resources. All right. Here you also find my slides, okay? All right, and this is available to you as we speak. So here you have slides for learning unit one, slides all the way up until learning unit seven. This is available to you as we speak. So literally you could pre-read in preparation for our lectures, okay? Um, right? Um, so, you know, there's, there's nothing holding you back from doing so, okay? And then obviously that would make our discussions and interactions all the more interesting because you obviously have a preconceived uh, conception towards whatever it is that we'll be discussing in that class. And then ABC process, this is something that we'll be looking at much later in the semester, as well with overhead application rates, okay. Lesson plans, I've only uploaded uh, the first one, okay, which is also fine. Okay, is it going to open up? Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is pretty much just breaks down how we're going to be approaching the uh, each learning unit. Okay, so for learning unit one, okay, what is the the the, the theme? Uh, it's the role of the financial manager. Okay, and these are the key concepts that you obviously will be embarking on. And then here we have um, um, active learning activities. So these are things that we'll be doing either together or you guys will be doing in your own time in order to kind of really ground you in the concepts that we'll obviously be covering, okay? Um, and then what else? If you scroll down, you'll see the activities or things that we'll actually be doing in relation to that exercise, all right? So this is actually what we are going to be doing today. We're going to be doing a Padlet uh, exercise. That's what we'll be doing today, all right? Then obviously in order to complete this, we'll be doing collab sessions and recordings, all right? Um, that being what we're doing right now, and then facilitate discussions, okay? That's what we're going to engage in 
uh, today and tomorrow when I see you guys, uh, some of you face to face and the rest of you on Friday when I see you face to face, right? What I would prescribe that you do before class is pre-read for theoretical understanding, all right? And then concept formulation. Now, when you pre-read, guys, it's not about mastering the content. Pre-reading is just so that you have an understanding or an idea of what we're actually going to engage in, okay? Literally just so that you have an idea, okay? So don't put pressure on yourself to say, oh, he's pretty much asking us to, to, to master the stuff before we go to class. No, literally even if you just browse through the content just to help you because what I can tell you now about finance is, and I'll tell you more about that when I share with you my philosophy, is finance is understand the theory so that you can then do the number crunching. Okay, this is about number crunching. It's like applied accounting, basically. Okay, fortunately, it's not as rigid. Okay, you know, with accounting, you have to debit when you debit, and you have to credit when you credit, and you have to do this in the journals, and you have to do that in the, uh, what can I say, general ledger. Okay, with, uh, with finance, things are a little bit more flexible. It's more closer to maths in that, you know, with maths, uh, you have different formulas that can get you to the final answer that you're trying to arrive at, okay? Right, but it is more structured than maths. It's not as uh, flexible, okay? Then, after class, guys, I can do backflips for you. I can sing and dance for you. At the end of the day, you have to complete multiple exercises and practice questions. Not only to test your knowledge, but to make sure that you master and that you're ready to then apply that knowledge, okay? So please make sure that you do that, okay? Um, yeah, so that's just an overview of how your lesson plans uh, typically. All right, so all of your lesson plans, I'll put them in this, in this folder, lesson plans. Okay, let's go back to more resources. Okay. Guys, oh, by the way, if you have any questions or thought, thoughts at any point in time, do feel free to ask me anything. Okay, right. And that pretty much is it. Okay, revision, this is just uh, something that, okay, that um, was already on this platform. Okay, so it's not something I've shared with you guys. Okay, cool. Now let's go back to our whiteboard. I'm just going to quickly share with you my philosophy. And I'm going to get some interaction from you guys as well whilst sharing this. All right. So this is, this is my philosophy. I break it down into three words. Okay. The first word begins with a U. The second word begins with an M. And the last word begins with a A. Now, if you were actually listening as I was doing the introduction, you actually would have heard me say one of, in fact, each of these words at different points. So, somebody tell me, all right, and it's open to everyone, in the chat, what Oh, some of you were late. Okay, no problem. Um, the recording will be available for this week. Uh, you didn't miss much. I was just introducing the subject matter. And then I was obviously uh, just touching on the breakdown of, of... This is just relevant for me to just revisit quickly for you guys. Breaking down this, test 1, 25%. Test 2, 30%. Exam, 35%. Okay? Um, so, and then ice tasks, 10%, okay? Right, so, and then the units, obviously, that each test or exam covers, okay? You guys must know this because, guys, you don't want to be caught by surprise. That means I'll be seeing you next semester, okay? So, please, just uh, make sure you're aware of this so that when you approach test one, you know, oh, test one is fairly easy. It's only unit one and two. You need to smash it, knock it out of the park. Because test two is going to be harder. Exam is going to be harder. So let me try and get as many marks from here as possible. Uh, and then obviously ICE tasks, 
Easy stuff because you have all the time in the world to do it. All right. Cool. All right. Then, so let's get back to this, okay? The rest of what I shared is the fact that everything that I'm sharing with you guys from my side is under more resources, okay? Cool. Now, somebody guess for me in the chat. You can also switch on your mic, or you can even write on the whiteboard. Uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Tell me, what does the U stand for? Even those who came late, please feel free to guess. Um, if you were ever my student, you know that um, uh, I always welcome guessing. I, I always welcome guessing. Wow. Ostile, I know that you're definitely one of my old students. Uh, Cavello, thank you also for your input. And thank you to whoever decides to write on the whiteboard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, it definitely is understand, okay? It definitely is unbelievable, unbelievably. Uh, sadly not, sadly not. <laughs> it is understand, okay? It is understand. So the first thing that you want to be doing when it comes to numbers-orientated modules is to understand. What is actually going on here? What is this formula all about, okay? What you want to do is understand okay cool then what does the M stand for somebody tell me what does the M stand for what's the next thing that you want to do after understanding I I I I hey yeah I've got a sharp punch I've got a sharp punch this year so you all are right it is master we want to after understanding we want to master we want to master what is going on here okay it's not enough to just understand, okay? We now need to master. How do we master? Somebody tell me, how do we master? How do we actually go about mastering? Ask, apply, practice. So I'm with uh, Cavello on this one. Practice, practice, practice. All right? Understanding, we're assuming, Reese, thank you for, 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 for that, ask. Okay, we're assuming if you don't under, understand something, all right, or if you need clarity on something, we're assuming you are asking at this point, all right, in the understanding process, all right. So here is where you need to be asking. When we do lessons, when we do a collab session, or when we are face to face in class, this is the focus. The focus is me helping you understand okay right when you go home and you open up your textbook and you practice as Andrew and Cabello have stated okay that is you and there's a reason why I'm highlighting this because I need you to understand that you guys if you don't take responsibility uh, yeah I will see you next year okay it is you and your textbook. That's where the mastering takes place. Okay? Then, somebody tell me, what is the last letter? What does it stand for? Apply, apply, apply. Uh, you guys, somebody, 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 application. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much, pretty much, pretty much the same thing. Okay? Achieve. Okay. All right. Attain. <laughs> Okay, all right. Actually, all of those would 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 work because uh, you could say after you've mastered, when you go and write, you achieve, or you go and attain that distinction. Okay, but as many of you highlighted, including Tokozani, it is apply. Guys, it's not enough to just be able to master. All right, it's not enough to just understand. Okay, it's not enough to just master. We then now need to be able to apply, apply that knowledge. Okay? We also need to be able to apply that knowledge. All right? So, why is it important for us to apply? Somebody tell me. Why is it important for us to apply? And once again, guys, you can switch on your mic. I, I've got no problems. It's nice to hear other people's voices also.
why is it important to get the marks? <laughs> Danita, that I like, I like, uh, I like that because that's a focused answer, and you pretty much are summarizing where where, where I'm trying to get to. Um, is there anybody else who would like to also uh, chime in? So you're 100% right, just to get the marks. But what are we doing in applying? Anybody else want to guess or put in some input? We are understanding, applying the information to the question. Okay, yes, 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 yes. So you're both right. Show understanding, ah, learning, yes, to see what you got wrong when applying, what you mastered and correcting them. Okay, I, we have no clue. <laughs> Thank you for the honesty, Cabello. Okay. Understand uh, using what you understood and mastered. Oh, Ostile, yes, 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 yes. Ah, so you were listening last year, eh? Ah, you were there, my friend. You were there. Being able to practice, uh, sorry, being able to practically use what you what we've learned. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So thank you guys all for your input. <laughs> thank you guys all for your input. Uh, you are definitely all correct. We want to when we have understood. All right, it puts us in a position where we can then master. Okay, you can't master something you don't understand. It's not going to happen. That's you cramming. And when it comes to numbers, life will expose you. If you try to cram numbers, life will expose you. Because when you are learning from your textbook, all we say is 10 plus 10. Sharp. So you cram 10 plus 10 is equals to 20. All right. But guess what? When we go to the exam, because in the textbook, we're trying to teach you addition, right? When we go to the exam, guess what we are going to do? We are going to say, what is 5 plus 10? Okay? Now, if you were cramming and not mastering what addition is, guess what? You will fail to apply. Okay? And this is where uh, Tanita's answer comes into play. We're here to get the marks. So if you can't apply, all right, what you've learned, all right, then guess what? Or what you've practiced. Guess what? You're not going to get the marks. And if you don't get the marks, hey, uh, you might be holding the same textbook next year. Okay? Right. Which is what we all don't want. Okay? Right. So that's the relevance of my teaching philosophy. Guys, uh, I primarily encourage this for numbers-related modules, things like accounting and, and uh, finance and things and investments you know i know you guys don't do that here but it also works just as well there but i know that this can also be applied in terms of theory all right because the higher you go up people don't want to just see you regurgitate answers they actually want to see you applying your knowledge okay but anyway enough on that enough on that so that is my philosophy, and that's the approach that I encourage you to, to take up in your studies with me, okay? Um, but enough said. Now what I want to do is I want us to begin our lecture. I want us to begin our lecture. I'm hoping I haven't forgotten anything crucial thus far. Guys, if you have any questions on what I have just shared with you up until this point. Guys, please feel free to ask in the chat um, if you have any questions or thoughts on anything in relation to the, what I've shared or in relation to the module. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Um, right. Um, so I'm going to continue, but if anything does come to mind please feel free to ask okay that's what i'm here for when i am no longer with you when you are now mastering it'll be you and your textbook and you won't have the opportunity to do what to apply so please 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 ask now so that uh, when you are alone and you are busy mastering you will have no challenges whatsoever in understanding okay so I've shared with you a link in the chat. Okay, I want all of you to click on that link. 
please click on that link. All right, and the reason why is so that we can all have access to this Padlet or Lit uh, um, page. Okay. All right. Please tell me if you have done so. Please tell me if you have done so. Give me a thumbs up in the chat if you have done so. All right, and I need everyone to do this. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the interaction. Let's keep it going. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, excellent. Okay, okay. Cool. So the next thing I want to ask you guys is now here I've got some questions for you guys. All right, and this is what we are going to be doing for this session. Okay, so what we're going to be doing for this session. I want us to just, you know, share what our thoughts are in relation to the subject matters that we're, we're going to be touching on, okay? All right, so there you can see I've got different columns. These are all columns, these top ones here, all columns, all right? And they kind of introduce us to a, a, a thought um, before touching on this specific question, all right? So the first one says, for each of the shareholders below, and guys, I want all of us to interact, all right? I want all of us to engage, all right? This is, this is one of the reasons why I also did this in our first lecture, because I want to foster a culture of engagement and interaction, okay? Um, the first question they have there for us, or the first column, it says, for each of the share stakeholders, for each of the stakeholders below, briefly describe their objectives. Okay, so guys, you can Google it, you can say it straight off the top of your head. I want to know, what do you think shareholders are all about? What are shareholders? What type of stakeholders are these guys? What, who are they, you know, to the business? Who are they? I want you to add a comment. It can be brief, it can be long. It doesn't need to be right. I just want to know what you are thinking. What are stake shareholders? What are shareholders? What type of stakeholders are they? So please add a comment there. All right, and let me know if you're unable to, for any reason, post your remark or thoughts. Okay. And just refresh. Okay, three comments already. I like it, I like it, I like it. All right, an individual that owns shares of the shared capital of an organization. Contribute capital. All right. As an individual that has shared investment in a business success, monetary, or knowledge. Okay. All right, all right, all right. An individual that legally owns one or more shares in the corporation, all right? Uh, the objective is to minimize the risk of their investment, okay, okay, okay. Shareholders, shareholders, what are shareholders to the business? All right, contribute capital for a share in an organization, owns a percentage of a company through shares, invests in the company by purchasing shares, shareholders, reap the benefits of the business. Ah, okay, okay. So you guys are all right. I see someone has already jumped on the next one. All right, you guys are all right. In a nutshell, all right, shareholders are people that own the business, okay? Shareholders are people that own the business, all right? Um, through, so therefore, they hold shares. They hold a percentage of shares of the business, all right? And now, I'm just giving you this information right now. There are different types of shares, okay? You won't be learning that in this module, I think. But I'm sure in your BCom degrees, you will at some point come across the different types of shares. You get things like preference shares, okay? You get things like ordinary shares, all right? And so forth, so forth, all right? 
but we just want to know what shareholders are. So let's go to the next one. And I see you guys have already uh, began throwing comments there as well. All right, you've got creditors. All right, creditors, who's a creditor? A person or company. I like that. A person or company, because they can be both, that a business owes money to. All right, a person or company to whom money is owing. Ah, 100%, guys. Creditors are other organizations that the business owes money to. Yes, 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 yes. Someone a business owes money to, yes. An entity that extends credit, yes, yes. You're looking at it from the creditor's standpoint. Who are they? What do they do for us? They extend credit to us. Creditors pro provide financing to a business, 100%, 100%. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes they, for instance, if I say uh, like a grocery store, if we are pick and pay or spa, all right. Now the farmers may give us, they may give us credit by way, not by providing finance to us, but they might provide uh, tomatoes and onions for us to sell in our grocery store. By virtue of them providing stock for us to sell in our grocery store, we now owe them money. Okay. And if we owe them money, they become a creditor. So in that sense, it's kind of like sometimes they just provide us uh, products. But you're 100% right. Um, they, in that sense, they are still financing our business because they're enabling us to have stock to obviously sell and therefore generate money. Okay, so they're financing our business in that sense. All right, so you guys are 100% right. Let's move on to the next one. Long-term credit providers. Long-term credit providers. Who are these people? Borrow capital that doesn't have to be paid for at least five years. Oh, those are some very nice creditors. If I don't have to pay a dime for five years, that would be nice. But it does. It does happen, all right, through some special investment, uh, some special investment um, agreements. Okay, so that does happen. So, for instance, if I'm to think of one right now, uh, the Section 12J investments, uh, you would literally lock up somebody's investment for five years and you'd only pay them after the five years. But the government has brought that to a close. But anyway, that's not relevant for you. I just wanted to add to that. What else? Is there anybody else who's going to speak to long-term credit providers? They're pretty much the same as our short-term or creditors, all right? The only difference is that these guys, yeah, typically they'd be providing capital as has been stated, all right? And um, we would be paying them for a good number of years, okay? All right, all right, cool. Individual that owes money to a business for a long period of time. Would SA Airlines be a long-term creditor? So, 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 that's a very relevant question. So, uh, um, in terms of SA Airlines, we would look at it from the perspective of they actually are a debtor. They owe, all right, they owe whoever has borrowed them all the money that they've used over the course of the years, okay? And I believe government is the one that has obviously been financing them, all right? So their creditor is the government, okay? But obviously, the government has funded uh, SAA through our taxes, okay? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So the creditor there is the SA government, the South African government. All right, financial institutions that businesses run uh, to when they need money, let's say buying land, 100%, buildings. In short, they lend businesses money for periods longer than a year, 100%. Somebody, somebody remembers their accounting. Good stuff. All right, I'm going to move on to employees, and we're just going to finish this column, and then we'll we'll take a break. But I see you guys are commenting on the other sections, which is perfectly fine. Okay, you guys can even comment on them in the break. It's up to you, or you can actually take your break, which I know I'm going to be doing. Okay, um, employees. What are they? A person employed for wages or a salary? Okay, sometimes people actually work for free. There are some free internships out there. Okay. But you guys get the point. These are individuals that work for a business or work for our business, okay? Uh, and gets paid for the hours they've worked, yes. You know, hired by the employer to do a specific job, yes. 
Okay, an individual who exchanges their factors of production. Wow, what an educated, what an educated comment. E.g., did you Google this one? Just tell the truth. <laughs> In exchange for remuneration. Brilliant. All right, no. Excellent, excellent. All right, good job, good job there. All right. Then finally, we have the government. Government, who is the government to the business? All right. The group of people with the authority to govern a country. Yes. And in governing the country, what do they do? They set legislation. They set laws, all right, which will either permit us to trade or inhibit us from trading, all right, or facilitate uh, our business, you know, make it easy for us to trade or make things very difficult, okay. All right, then it goes on to say an, um, an entire, I think this was meant to be an entity that is elected to manage and govern a country and its individuals that live in the country, 100%. That is 100% right. Guys, are there any 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 uh, stakeholders that we forgot that we forgot to 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 talk about here? Are there any stakeholders that we forgot? You can just add it under government. I don't know if you have this feature to add a comment or a a subtitle that governs a country. Yes, 100%. Are there any stakeholders? Or you can even put it in the chat. But then how is the government their creditor if they are the owners? Okay, so you are a, a nice question there, uh, Cabello. I'll tell you now. I'll, I'll, I'll share my thoughts on that now. I'll share my thoughts on that now. Suppliers. Okay, suppliers. We've looked. Yes. Okay, the general public. Oh, I was only thinking of customers, but you guys are 100% right. Suppliers, a lot of the time we look at them also as our creditors, but yes, you're 100% right. And then obviously uh, the general public. Guys, I, I totally didn't think about those guys. They are also stakeholders because whatever business we are running in the community will affect them. Okay, so guys, now let's go to Cabello's uh, question here. On the chat, all right. On 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 the collab session. I'm sure you guys can see it on the screen there. My cursor is right by his question. Now, what are your thoughts? All right. Uh, earlier, maybe just to give context to anybody who's wondering what exactly is going on. Earlier, um, we were talking about creditors, and we were talking about how with SAA, all right, South African Airlines, all right. Are they um, are they a creditor? All right, no, they and I said they're not a creditor because they have been what borrowing money, all right, to obviously operate. They haven't been able to generate profits as a result of not generating profits in order to sustain that business, in order to pay salaries and wages, uh, pay for whatever um, other expenditures necessary for them to operate. They would borrow the money from government. Now, Cabello is asking, but how now can government be their creditor if they are the owners, all right, if they own these uh, SAA and other state-owned enterprises, okay? So that's a relevant question, okay? So is there anybody who would like to share their thoughts? You could be agreeing with him. You could be just sharing your thoughts. They so operate as two separate entities, okay? All right, all right, all right. So state-owned entities operate separately. Yeah, that's that's what uh, Reese is pretty much telling us here. Any other any other thoughts or suggestions? Again, I welcome guessing. Okay. Yes, I agree. They have different accounts. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, and one thing I must share with you guys, I, I myself, much like yourselves, am also learning. So I'll never claim to know everything, okay? So I'm always open to your thoughts, whatever they may be, okay? You guys might actually be teaching me. I learn from you just as much as you learn from me. Okay, okay, okay. 
All right, so um, in the interest of obviously giving you guys um, your break, um, I think I think those are all the comments that we have. So I think I'll just share my input. So I agree with you guys 100%. All of you, even Cabello, I agree with you too. It's the government that owns these. They are state-owned enterprises. Okay? They are state-owned enterprises. Therefore, the government owns these things. But as they've highlighted, they, uh, they're enterprises. So they, they are a separate legal entity in and of themselves. Okay? But then... If it's like that, then there's no need for SA to pay back the money. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So, um, so let me let me let me let me say this. The next thing that you have to ask yourself is how has government how has government funded SAA? Is it is it through their own you know, or has it been through taxes? Okay, we know we all know it's 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 through taxes. Now, guys, I'm not playing. I'm not here uh, trying to be political or push an agenda. Okay, I just want to be straight up honest with you. I'm just using these as examples uh, uh, because they obviously pertain to what it is that we are actually touching on. Okay, right. So uh, now, when it when these state-owned enterprises are all of them. Whether you think of the post office, whether you think of SAA, whatever state-owned enterprise, it is meant to generate money in and of itself. All right. The reason why government uh, has state-owned enterprises is because it wants to ensure that the private sector does not overcharge for the services. For instance, let's say if the private sector um, were the ones who are supplying us water. All right. We only have one water supplier. All right. To my knowledge, yeah. And now, if it was in the hands of private sector, private sector would say supply and demand. Now, if we can charge a, it's basically a monopoly. It becomes a monopoly because it's only one entity that's running it. Now, that means that Aubrey, running this private enterprise, can charge whatever price he wants, and you guys are now subject to that price. So, government says no. There are certain strategic businesses or industries we need to participate in so that we can ensure that we don't um, allow things like that to take place. It's not only just about pricing, okay? Such as the defense as well, you know, police. It's, it's a government thing. Uh, what else? Electricity, ESCOM, it's a government thing, right? You can obviously provide alternative energy, but you can't, you can't now say I'm now going to go and build my own generators and start supplying electricity no um you definitely you'd have to get permission from government and then i'm sure you'd probably go into a joint venture or something to that effect all right so anyway the point is that these state-owned entities are supposed to generate money in and of themselves i do not know what just happened there but i stopped sharing my screen but it's okay because um you guys uh, all you need is 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 obviously the question that we've been addressing. So that said, um, they still owe, but obviously as a result, sometimes we, we in fact, we have, we just write off uh, what is owed, okay? Uh, that said, guys, uh, I hope, Cabello, I've answered your question sufficiently, um, but otherwise, let's take our break and then at 2 o'clock, we'll continue with the rest of our questions. Okay. <laughs> Through theft. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Let's take that 10-minute break. And then at 2 o'clock, let's continue with our questions.